Yeah, welcome back to Bitwig Studio course, uh, beginner's course. I believe we're on lesson 18. If I've done my math correctly, this is a another day. This course is kind of, for me, being produced over probably three or four days. So just want to make sure I continue to have, uh, you know, continuity uh, from video to video working on multiple product projects in ProLogic and Ableton, and now we're going through Bitwig, so trying to get my bearings straight there. So looks like I've got uh, a little loop group here for you. We've been talking about Bitwig for most of the course. Haven't really explored any audio, so let's make a track. I don't know that I'm going to make the best production I've ever made. I think it's going to be real basic. Might not even complete it to the end. We'll just kind of put some loops together and go over the dynamics there. Again, this is a beginner's course, kind of help you get your feet wet, and find your way around, and just give you some sort of video point of reference to, uh, you know, how to use Bitwig. So let's hear what we've got going on here. It'll help if I put it at the beginning. So, just a nice little uh, kick, clap, top loop beat here. I made a little kind of plucky little lead sound off of uh, Bitwig's Polysynth. Modulated a couple things here. The resolution looks like it's got a modulation. Got a little modulation going here. So, nothing too fancy. Like I said, I'm not trying to produce the best track ever today. We're just trying to kind of get through this guy together and learn a little bit. And uh, got a little chord line here, and we've got a little effects crash. So let me go ahead and copy these loops, move them on out, make everything just a little bit bigger. So that'll be Command D, and there we go. Now let me take the loop marker, move this guy over, and kind of hear it with the crash. So let's take a little bit closer look at this crash. I think I have some modulation inside the clip. Yeah, I do. Um, looks like I was working with the pitch. Let me hear this a little bit closer. So I need to mute the other guys and leave my microphone available. If I solo that, it'll turn off my microphone. All right, so this should, yeah, it looks like it's given us the microphone too. All right, let's take a listen to this crash and see what kind of modulation we can put on that to give it some life. So what you saw me do there, let me stop this, is um, create this nice little curved bend. And what you're able to do is actually when you hover over the line, you push the Alt or Option button on your keyboard. It's going to give you this little up and down kind of curved bend signature. And then you can position the uh, modulation the way you like. So I like kind of... Where we put that guy, we'll leave it there for now. Go ahead and unmute everything else. So there you go, a little modulation on our crash. I'm going to jump over to the uh, mixing view and adjust the overall levels of the project to make sure we're in a good place.
again, that nice view that I always enjoy is the larger metering. Get to feel the energy a little bit better. So it feels like we're pretty well balanced now. I like that. I like that a lot. All right. I'm going to mute this crash. Don't really think we need to hear that over and over. And let's look at uh, taking a MIDI source. We're going to kind of focus a little bit on hybrid tracks that we'd mentioned earlier in the course. I thought I'd take a minute now to kind of show you the process of a hybrid track. So if we take a MIDI clip, highlight it, you can right click or you can choose from the menu file up here. I prefer right clicking. And you've got an option to bounce in place or bounce. So let's look at bounce first. It's going to give me a little menu here asking me if I want to do pre-effects, pre-fader, post-fader, custom, whatever. So once we bounce, we've got an audio source, the same as our MIDI clip here. So let's mute that guy. Muted that. So let's, we should, we should put the loop in the right spot here. Everything should sound the same. We should continue to hear our little pluck sound right here. Yeah, perfect. The benefit there, of course, is when you open this guy up, you can go in and begin to modulate and, and edit. And uh, let's, let's, for instance, say I'll take the... Uh, I'll take the time selection tool. Highlight a segment and say let's go ahead and reverse that now we've got that little guy reversed let's reverse say this guy here okay so let's take a look at it now there you go completely different sound just by bouncing it to audio one of the benefits of moving MIDI to audio. I'm going to get rid of it. We don't need it not for this example. And now let's go back. I'm going to highlight this clip again and look at our other option. Bounce in place. This is the hybrid track that you've been hearing me talk about. So what the guys at Bitwig have done is they must have thought, hey, when you bounce a track, it kind of takes up more real estate because when we did it, you know, the regular way, it opened up a whole new audio file here and you know, eat up a little bit more real estate on our screen. Wouldn't it be nice to bounce a track and let it live right in the same audio channel as the MIDI? Boom. And that's exactly what we've got. We've got audio and MIDI all living together in one big happy family. Let's loop those two and take a listen just to make sure everything smoothly sounds the same. Now I've got it figured out. I just had the uh, the wrong loop in there because it was a loop we were working with earlier and it had been some editing on it so we weren't able to hear it. But now you can hear clearly that you've got audio and MIDI and it all sounds identical, living in the same track. So that is hybrid tracks in Bitwig Studio. Very, very cool feature, saving real estate and, of course, giving you the flexibility to modulate the audio in a way that you can't with the MIDI and having it all living in the same area. Really, really nice feature. So, hybrid tracks, Bitwig Studio. Let's go on to the next video.